Alexander Kolotov, who's going to be talking about arbitrary message bridge for bridges for inter Ethereum interoperability. Uh, take it away, Alex. Yeah, okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. So uh, today uh, I would like to share with you our experience how to build, uh, how we build uh, arbitrary message bridge and uh, Let's uh, let me start st uh, from history first. So um, probably you know that uh, we as a POA uh, network um, project. So uh, we developed uh, and set up our own uh, chain in in May 2018. Um, and um, the first issue we met that we need to transfer our um, you know, token to from our uh, internal ch uh, chain, so native POA coin, to uh, Ethereum mainnet in order to add more volatility for the token and liquidity mode for the token, and uh, that's why we, uh, you know. Um, Considered few options to transfer uh, the tokens, and one of the token, uh, the option was to build uh, the token bridge. And uh, starting from that, uh, we have this uh, bridge up and uh, up and running. And um, so we, tr uh, we it, 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 there are a lot of tokens. I mean, amount of token was transferred through this bridge in, uh, in back and forth directions. So. Um, and uh, after that, we set set up another chain uh, in October of 2018. It was uh, XDI chain. So, and uh, uh, the the bridge, the token bridge, was the main component of the infrastructure because um, the total supply of the this chain is just uh, the tokens which went through the bridge. Uh, so um, the, the user uh, need to you know, deposit token on one uh, an Ethereum mainnet on the uh, token bridge contract. And after that, the uh, token bridge contract on another site on, on the XDI chain, uh, we will mean the, the tokens. And uh, later we you know experimented with other tokens, uh, Token bridges like uh, Rapid Ether Ethereum Plus C coin. So and uh, uh, in this year we so yeah we set up a arbitrary message bridge. So uh, it is like a trial pi period for for this bridge. So and it allow us to transfer any information from uh, POA or Ignite chain to Ethereum mainnet or uh, or in uh, opposite direction from Ethereum. Uh, to XDI. So, uh, in order, to, so this um, you know talk will be more about technical details, how it works, and what is possible to do with this uh, arbitrary message breach. So, and that's why I think uh, we need uh, go, go deeper how exactly the breach, the current token breach works, uh, and after that go deeper into AMB. So, um, the main component uh, in the of the token bridge is the contract and another main component second part a second main component is that uh, bridge oracles so uh, um, we could consider the um, oracles as the participants of a multi-seq contract and the token and token bridge contracts actually are multi-seq uh, you know mm, look like multi-seq um, contracts so uh, as soon as uh, we send something from, for example, XDI, yeah, from from POA chain or XDI chain, uh, let, let's consider here uh, POA chain that uh, we we need to lock uh, some amount of tokens on the ho on the bridge contract on the home side, um, and um, after the oracles see the corresponding events uh, in the POA chain and confirms uh, these um, requests to relay tokens to the mainnet. And so these, these signatures are passed to the foreign bridge contract. And uh, the foreign bridge contract uh, mint tokens, uh, the corresponding number of tokens on uh, Ethereum side. So this is the you know, uh, main idea uh, behind the token bridge. So and. Um, uh, we, we, we need to see that the oracles uh, performs everything and uh, as much as so as many oracles we have is uh, uh, depends on the security of the system so uh, currently 
uh, if we have, uh, it, it is better always to have more oracles. So, and uh, by doing this, we could imagine lots of different schemes. We could, you know, uh, collect fees for, for the transactions through this bridge. We can, we can you know, um, um, we, we, we can set up other bridges, but every every time you would like to set up any bridge through, through for, for example, between XDAI chain and Ethereum mainnet, you need to set up entire infrastructure from scratch. So you need uh, another set of the oracles, I mean, another set of the validators, you need to, another set of uh, bridge contracts, and that's why it's quite, quite you know, difficult for projects to, to find uh, the corresponding number of uh, independent validators to set up these oracles. And uh, uh, that's why we came to the idea that probably it makes sense to set up one, you know, one pair of the contract and the one set of the oracles that allow to, uh, you know, applications uh, to, um, you know, use this pair, um, you know, these pair uh, contracts and this set of oracles instead of se setting up uh, an another uh, set of oracles. And uh, it, 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 it was how the idea about uh, the token bridge, uh, I mean, every arbitrary message bridge appeared. So, um, it, you know, uh, th this code, um, you know, presents um, everything you need to know about the AMB actually. So we use the ability of the um, of Ethereum virtual machine to, uh, call the methods by using their uh, being encoded um, uh, binary data, so uh, or a selector with uh, b b some some data. And uh, um, if if you look at this pair of the contracts, you will see that okay, we have one pair of contract, one contract which prepare this uh, being encoded uh, binary data, and another um, contract which just use this data in order to uh, invoke uh, another contract uh, with uh, the corresponding method of this uh, on another contract. And uh, imagine that just now we will see, we will have this caller and invoker in different chains. And it means that we need to start transfer by somehow uh, this encoded data from one chain to another in order to invoke could have an ability to, you know, call the corresponding method of the corresponding contracts. And uh, uh, this is uh, how we started thinking about the uh, AMB. So, and the arbitrary message bridge uh, is working currently uh, just on the chains uh, which support Ethereum uh, virtual machines. So, um, and uh, the, 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 the internals of the bridge that we just take this um, encoded data um, from one chain and pass it to another chain and it invokes uh, the, and invoke the corresponding uh, contract to this uh, requested uh, data. Okay, so, um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, um, main, API of this uh, arbitrary message bridge. So every contract which would like to pass data through the bridge uh, just need to call a require uh, to pass message from the bridge contract uh, and provide uh, address of the contract on another side which needs to be called uh, data. Uh, so it, it, it means that this is encoded uh, message call. And um, Actually, we also ask it to provide a uh, gas limit for the for the call in order to you know uh, secure the invoker a bit uh, in order to not spend lots of gas. Um, and it is actually common practice which is used uh, in gas network stations uh, and uh, gas stations network and uh, similar projects. Okay, so. Um, Let's let's uh, see how the how the parties uh, interact together when we introduce this functionality, and um, uh, what we can see here that okay so there is some uh, user the, the, uh, which would like to interact with the contract uh, on another side of the bridge. So uh, it uh, ne this user needs to you know uh, call some functionality from uh, some some 
originator contract. Later we will call it a mediator contract. And uh, this uh, originator contract will sa- send request to the for- uh, to, to the bridge contract to uh, pass the message. Um, uh, oracles again see this event and uh, confirms uh, everything from their side. Uh, so uh, send the corresponding transaction to another side of the bridge, so not to another chain. And uh, as soon as the bridge contract uh, on another side will receive enough number of signatures, uh, so it will cause uh, um, the, the needed methods uh, by using call functionality uh, of Ethereum virtual machine. And um, yeah, this is very simple uh, case, and uh, actually everyone could start using the bridge in this manner. But uh, by using uh, this very simple uh, framework, we could build more complex applications. Uh, for example, uh, this is how we um, consider to transfer s- s- NFTs from one chain to another. And in fact, we have a, a GitHub repo where. We experimented with CryptoKitties um, and sent CryptoKitties from a, uh, by using this uh, set of mediators. Uh, we could send CryptoKitties from another, one chain to another. Um, uh, so the scenario is, is more complex than on previous side, slide. Sorry, and uh, you see that uh, so first of all. Uh, the user communicate with NFT contract in order to approve transfer of uh, NFT co- uh, non fungible token to another s- site. So after that, the user communicate with the mediator contract to uh, request transfer uh, of this token, uh, and uh, the mediator contracts uh, so uh, log this contract, uh, th- this NFT on uh, on the mediator contract uh, balance. I would, would say so. And um, yet uh, needed metadata of this NFT in order to transfer this uh, metadata as part of um, uh, required to pass message call. So uh, 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 token ID, uh, ownership, owner of this token and uh, metadata of this token up uh, encoded and pass it uh, to the for- bridge contract. Uh, oracles do, d- do any ma- all, all the magic to transfer this information to another site and the bridge contract on another site as soon as enough confirmation appears uh, we'll um, use uh, you know special so in fact when we pass the message uh, from uh, from the one chain to another the the message is uh, Encoded call of handle bridge tokens methods uh, on of mediator contract on another side. So, uh, and uh, other data which is which which is which I which I said um, ownership uh, metadata and token ID and mediator contract by using this uh, information could mean new uh, NFT uh, on another side of the bridge. De- definitely, this is altered NFTs uh, contract. So, if we uh, talking about uh, Standard crypto kitties. It means that uh, we need to provide mint new uh, crypto crypto kitties, so, and uh, this functionality is not doesn't exist in the original uh, crypto kitty contracts, and that's why, for example, if you would like to work with crypto kitties, we need to alter uh, this contract and uh, sub- deploy another version of this contract to to, to another ch- to to side chain. Okay, so as I said, this is a working scenario, and we tried to do this. And if you go, if you go to the uh, our um, project uh, GitHub repo, you can find the the repository where you can find any all needed contracts and describe its uh, um, way how to set up everything. And uh, this is quite complex scenario, and uh, we consider it more. Uh, you know, more relaxing scenarios when we transfer not NFTs but uh, fungible tokens like uh, RC20 or uh, RC677. Uh, um, and um, definitely, when we need to transfer uh, the information through the network, we need to consider some uh, through, through the bridge, we need to consider some uh, security considerations. 
Uh, first of all, that we provide the, the mediator contract ability to check uh, what was invoke, yeah, what was invoker, I mean, yeah, sender, originator uh, um, on the uh, on the on the on the on the chain, yeah, originating chain, um, and uh, also also the contract will always can need to check that uh, this message because it's quite for, in, in example of the minting of uh, nfts or uh, fungible tokens we definitely uh, don't want to allow everyone to call this functionality from a mediator contract and that's why uh, we could secure this by uh, checking uh, who was the message sender i mean the transaction sender uh, and if it was uh, um, the breach uh, contract and also uh, we would like to check that uh, that only some specific contract on another side uh, call us uh, through the breach and uh, definitely in order to prevent pre reply attack uh, we ask uh, the mediator contracts to you know to add some uh, random data or nonce uh, to the um, to the encoded information uh, in order to uh, have some unique uh, sequence of bytes and unique uh, messages uh, in order to prevent reply attack. Um, yeah, and uh, everything is working just now. Uh, yeah, but you know, definitely when you, for example, if you consider that uh, you, you would like to transfer something from POA network not not PA, to PA network and to for example to XDA ch uh, chain you will find that gas is very cheap there. Uh, I mean gas price uh, is not high and that's why um, we can, you know, uh, be, it, it is not a big deal that uh, validators will spend a few few cents uh, even less uh, to transfer the data from uh, Ethereum mainnet, but. Uh, when we are saying that everyone could transfer information in the opposite direction from POA networks or from XDAI chain to the Ethereum mainnet, we need to take into account the gas price in the Ethereum mainnet. And, uh, and that's why um, it, it makes sense to consider the key, uh, options how uh, how validators uh, i mean bre bridge oracles owners will um, uh, compensate the gas usage or expenses for ga gas consumptions um, and uh, actually we are trying uh, two ideas here so uh, we provide an experiment so one experiment is already in the test net uh, with uh, gas token so um, uh, everyone, every time when um, we uh, have a request from Ethereum mainnet to transfer something to XDAI chain or to POA chain, um, we will mean gas tokens. Some, some, you know, the actually, if it, if it is a fixed value of gas tokens or it will be changed, uh, it is still, uh, you know, discussable. Um, uh, but the main idea here that we will mean gas token, which will be uh, sold uh, on uh, some decentralized exchanges to cover expenses to relay messages by validators in opposite direction. So yeah, uh, this is one way. And another way uh, which we, are, we will, you know, try to, uh, you know, implement in the near future that, uh, we will use a permit functionality or meta transaction functionality provided by uh, DAI contract. Uh, and uh, we will ask uh, user uh, when it would like to transfer something from XDAI chain, POA chain uh, to my Ethereum mainnet. Uh, we will ask the user to sign the transaction, meta transaction, and use information from this meta transaction, uh, for example, information about uh, reward uh, he, this user would like to provide for transferring this transaction to another chain uh, to to request the corresponding number of tokens uh, from from DAI uh, contract uh, which is actually should yeah actually own it by this user who would like to transfer this information and by doing this we will cover definitely uh, expenses especially if we just exchange 
uh, on Uniswap, for example, um, this DAI to Ethereum uh, in the same transaction, and uh, our validators will be happy in this case. <laughs> okay, so um, it is, you know, uh, as I said, everything is up and running just now and ready for, uh, and we have uh, these bridges in trial mode for XDAI chain and for POA chain. Also, definitely we have uh, AMB bridge between, between two test nets, Coven and Sokol, so everyone could experiment with them. So uh, AMB consists of uh, components such as um, uh, contracts uh, which provide everything, uh, every every uh, everything which is needed from uh, you know blockchain point of view that uh, arbitrary message implementation itself. So multi sig governance, uh, uh, some uh, ma management of failed calls because we definitely need to deal with them when, uh, for example, uh, the contract. Uh, we would like we would like to call uh, you know consume more uh, gas w uh, when it was you know requested and uh, we need to deal with these transactions so uh, and uh, also fee managers uh, which uh, allow us to get uh, gather some fees uh, and this is all, all ongoing just now as I said. Uh, we provide uh, oracles which are uh, used to, you know, uh, and uh, fancy uh, Ansible playbooks to deploy these contracts. So I deploy these oracles uh, for to monitor the bridge health. We have a bridge monitor, um, and uh, we have few examples developed uh, for uh, for applications uh, to be used by applications. Uh, and we uh, these examples present how to transfer uh, uh, ERC six seven seven tokens uh, through the AMB uh, NFTs like crypto kitties through AMB. So and we call these mediators. Um, uh, this pair of mediators, which application is 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 needs to develop uh, by using uh, our templates or from scratch, uh, we call them um, extensions, um, AMB, uh, arbitrary message bridge extensions. And uh, currently, we are developing uh, a plugin uh, for um, Bernard Wallet, uh, which can be used by application as a, as a template for. Uh, for, for the user interface they would like to provide end users to to transfer tokens from one chain to another. Uh, so uh, our current version of, of AMB is already used. And, uh, and we we have two uh, you know third party projects. Uh, uh, which uh, use AMB to transfer tokens from one chain to another, the DAO stack and the GALT project. Um, and definitely we de we use it for our own purposes. Uh, for example, we're developing an uh, extension to transfer stake token for XDAI chain. So the stake token will be used uh, for uh, POS uh, DAO consensus, uh, which is uh, which is phase one of, of this of this consensus is already run uh, on uh, uh, XDAI chain, and uh, we will we started work to uh, transfer all existing bridges our bridges uh, to AMB model. Uh, it's quite interesting experiment because. Uh, we definitely didn't consider this uh, opportunity or this ability when developed the first version of the bridge or to token bridge, and just now it's quite you know challenging task to uh, to transfer everything uh, on new plat on new model, and um, yeah, I don't I even don't think that um, there are much experiments in this direction when. You know, um, instead of deploying a new pair of contracts, you, you would like to um, replace 
the bridges with uh, very old functionality to new functionality. For example, POA bridge is, you know, it, it is almost two years old and uh, there are hundreds or even thousands of transactions uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, millions of uh, POA tokens uh, which are on balance on this bridge and um, and uh, we need to do this very carefully and uh, be uh, quite, you know, um, very smart to to transfer everything uh, without money loss. Okay, so uh, and uh, for sure we started thinking about uh, Ethereum uh, to the zero um, because because uh, we definitely need to deal with this um, this platform, uh, with this chain, and uh, currently we, we 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 are on very you know start to consider um, how to use the bridge, the arbitrary message bridge with Ethereum. Uh, to the zero environment. It's quite challenging task because uh, the paradigm of two, Ethereum to the zero is completely different. We have sharding, we have, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, stateless clients and, uh, and that's why, uh, you know, uh, the, probably uh, the, the current uh, um, architecture of arbitrary message bridge needs to be reconsidered completely. And it's and we will think uh, how to do this uh, during this year uh, in order to find yeah, in order to provide new possibilities for uh, the, uh, applications to build uh, cross chain uh, applications. And uh, if you're interested in uh, in the pro in this project, you can go to the documentation site. It is Git book uh, organized uh, documentation and code. So in fact, we have uh, this um, a repository where our oracles are located. So monitors, Oracle monitor and UI located. So we will replace all UI. Uh, which is dedicated more for token uh, RC20 token transfer uh, by uh, plugin for burner wallet, and uh, is, you you could find there the reference to the contracts uh, which we, which I using for token bridge, and uh, the, I think that's all from my side so far, and I'm open for your questions. Yeah, so uh, it's always interesting for me to know the the personal trajectories of people of getting involved in in crypto and ending up, you know, uh, doing an interoperability uh, work. Where did when did when and where did you did you start in the ecosystem? What was the first thing that you worked on? Uh, you know, uh, I had uh, previous experience in telecom in the industry, so uh, I do, so, uh, and that's why when I got the opportunity to look at the crypto projects it quite it was quite easy for me to uh, understand what's going on because uh, and you know it was you know very close to the things I, from from network point of view uh, what I did in the past um, and uh, so the I started from uh, 2017 so uh, at the at the middle of 2017 so um, the first year uh, so I, I've had a very rapid uh, introduction to Ethereum blockchain. So um, I'm working also in the university in here in Russia. So and that's why I need to work with students um, in order to just, uh, teach them blockchain related stuff. So and that's why uh, at that time I dig into the the. The, the technology and uh, started after that providing providing my knowledge to them and uh, in spare time I um, you know considered to work with PA project to 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 help them with uh, setting this uh, in, in, this cross chain communication between uh, 
uh, yeah, for for for, for pro the project project needs. Cool. Uh, so you're teaching at the university. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Which which university is that? You know, it's very new university in Russia. It is it is called Innopolis University. Uh, it is completely IT university. There is no other uh, you know spe spe uh, uh, pro pro tracks there. Or just uh, cyber security, robo robotics, uh, data science, and software engineering. Um, it is very small university, uh, 700 of students, uh, including bachelors and masters. Um, so yeah. So is there a, is there a blockchain course, blockchain degree, or are you offering it as part of a computer science course or what specifically? Yeah, yeah. We it is it is uh, it is part of the computer science uh, course. So uh, we just uh, provide opportunity to to different tracks like data science or uh, software engineering to uh, dig into the blockchain technology because. Uh, First, firstly, it is on hype, and that's why students are very interesting to to see what happens there and to understand what 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 is going there. And secondly, um, the, from from the ground point of view, it's very interesting to provide this information to them because uh, if they even will not work um, with blockchain technologies in the future uh, as a specialist, but uh, the knowledge they get, could get. Uh, from the uh, understanding uh, after understanding uh, how this technology works uh, could help them uh, build a better project a better better product in the future yeah uh, right dealing with immutability as a da as a data scientist is an interesting is an is an interesting engineering and social okay. question i'm curious um so uh, do you guys talk about ethics much uh, in 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 design and engineering, uh, you know, on this particular course, uh, it will be more at the end. But uh, they have core, not core, uh, the you know, philosophy course, which co cover a lot of ethics uh, for software engineers. Uh, but it is not part part of my course. Okay, cool, man. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye.